Thanks for joining me today. We're going to do three different crafts today, all about birds. The first one is the duckling craft. This one's a lot of fun. I'm super excited to use all the materials that I got for it. So the first thing you'll need is an orange piece of craft paper and then two white pieces of craft paper. I have a plate with some yellow washable paint. Uh, and I have a black marker. This can be washable. Mine's permanent just because it was the closest black marker nearby. Some scissors. A milk jug, jug cap or any other cap. Doesn't matter what size as long as it's a circle that you can use to trace with. And a bath loofah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do some of the easy parts first, the cutting parts. So we are making, making a duckling. So the first thing I want to do is draw the bill and cut it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it pretty simple and just draw an oval. That might be too big. We'll find out. And I'm going to cut it out. Now remember scissor safety. If you need help, please ask a grown up to join you. Now I, I had traced another oval on the back side of this, so I can only use this side. So I'm gonna have a little bit of black marker, but on mine, but if you cut it out and then flip it over, you should have just orange on your side, but I had something else under it because I didn't want to waste any paper. So let me just trim it up really quick. <laughs> Still a beautiful oval. Just getting a little bit of marker off. There we go. All right, that's all you need from the orange craft paper. Then from one of your white craft papers, you're going to use the cap and you're going to trace two circles for the eyes. You can always draw your own circles. I just chose to kind of make it fun and do some tracing. It can be anywhere in the paper because you're just using it to make a circle. You always want to hold it down. I'm using just one finger and then tracing with the other. Oh, perfect. Ooh, got some marker on my fingers. That's okay, you should be using a washable marker. I'll have to scrub this because it's permanent. Boom, two beautiful circles. And these are gonna be the eyes, so you can go ahead and take your black marker and just draw the pupils of the eyes. Ah, it's gonna be really silly looking. And now you're just gonna cut these out. And my duckling has big round eyes. You might have decided to draw your own eyes and you made smaller eyes. You could have also chosen to use a different color for the pupil. I just had a black marker. If you have a blue one or a green one or a yellow one or a pink one, you can make it have different color eyes. That's up to you. This is your duckling. It's fun to get creative and try different things. Now I'm just cutting out the eyes. Boop. All right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so silly looking. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and keep this scrap paper. I'm going to put it somewhere else out of my way. But you always want to keep it because we only use a little bit of that paper and some of the other crafts could end up needing orange or white paper. You never know. Okay. This is where it gets fun. We can set aside all the other tools because what we need is the yellow paint and the loofah. Okay. So you're gonna take your loofah and you're gonna dip it in the yellow paint. I'm just gonna spread mine around a little bit so I get it kind of on a good amount of the loofah. Now I haven't tried this before so this is gonna be very interesting but it looks cool. Okay, I'm gonna use it to paint the body of my duckling. So I'm just gonna stamp onto the paper. I think I'm gonna go like that. 
All right, there's the head area. That's just one almost circle there. And maybe just a bigger body part down here. That's for the body. Oh my gosh, so cool. It looks like a fluffy duckling. Have you ever seen a duckling in real life? They're so soft and so fuzzy. That's what this looks like. All right, now you can stop here and let it dry. Once the paint is dry, you can glue on the eyes and the beak. However, if you don't want to wait till it dries, you can use the paint as somewhat of a glue. I'm going to see if this works um, and just set the eyes on. And when the paint dries, the eyes could dry on it. But you can always wait. I had some glue nearby just in case it didn't work out. So here we go. I'm going to put one eye on here. Another eye there. Ah. Okay. This is working out. It has its big duckling beak right here. So cute. That's funny, I have a little ripple in the paper and it's causing the beak to point out, but that's actually kind of a coincidence in a good way. And the very last thing I'm gonna do, you might get a little bit of yellow paint on your marker. Um, oh my gosh, this is turning out way cuter than I thought. <laughs> I'm going to make the feet. Now duck feet are really silly, but I'm going to use um, just kind of like a really simple idea to make the feet. So, and all it involves is lines and curves. So, you're just going to do three lines. One out that way, one this way, and one that way. And then for the other foot, one out this way, one out this way one out this way. All right, now you're going to draw a curve going towards the body like this, from one line to the other, and from one line to the other, and then on the other side. And there you have it. All right, and don't forget you're gonna to wanna to rinse out the loofah as soon as possible in the bathtub or the sink so that the paint doesn't dry up in the loofah if you ever wanna use it again. It's washable paint, so it should just rinse right out. Ask a grown up for help and make sure that you get that out before it hardens because I don't think you'll be able to use a loofah ever again for bathing. Could use it for painting again, maybe. But there you have it. A cute duckling. Okay. Our next craft, I'm going to show you two different ways to make a bird feeder. The first one, I'm just using, uh, I should say, upcycling a milk carton. This would typically go in your recycling, but not anymore. It's going to be a bird feeder. I have some bird seed. Um, have your parents help you uh, choose some. I chose wild songbird bird seed. We're going to see. I think a lot of the uh, birds in my backyard like to sing, so I'm going to feed them. I have some scissors. I have a black permanent marker this time uh, is important because I'm just going to be tracing um, small circles on the milk carton and you need it to not smear. So it's probably going to need to be a permanent marker. Again, have a grown up help you. I'm going to move the cap out of the way. I have a string. And I have two dowels. Um, there's many different things you could use for these. Um, when they go into the bird feeder, they're gonna be little perches for the birds to sit on. So it's gonna act as like a twig or a branch. However, if you have a wooden spoon or your parents have uh, like marshmallow or vegetable skewers, anything like that, that can just be small little perches for them, it's just gonna go through the bottom of the bird feeder. So, Anything like that will work as long as it's durable, especially if it rains, and that it doesn't um, fall off. So I do have my uh, orange piece of paper for my last craft because I realized that I can use it um, when it gets to the point where I need to put the bird seed inside the milk jug. I'm going to try to make a funnel out of it. So we'll see if that works. If you have a funnel at home, you can also do that, or if your bird seed is in something that's easier to pour in a milk jug. Lucky you. <laughs> so here we go. The first thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to take my permanent marker 
and you're going to want to draw a small circle on each side of the jug. It's kind of a little bit smaller than a dime. Kind of like a like an eraser at the end of a pencil maybe. I'm making it that size because that's how small my dowels are. If you're using a wooden spoon, you're gonna wanna make them wider than the spoon so it slides right in, okay? Now the next one, this is where the birds are going to get the seeds out of, so you're gonna wanna make a good circle right above that. The birds will be able to poke their heads in. Maybe you can do different sizes. If it's a big bird, he really needs to pop his head in on that end. If it's a little bird, he can come over here. That way they don't fight over sides. <laughs> okay. Here you go. All right, this next part is gonna involve cutting the milk jug. Please ask a grown up to help you with this part. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. If you wanna pause at this point in the video and have a grown up help you cut these out, they can be really tricky. I'm just gonna fast forward through this part in the video and I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so I think I did it. I have my big circles where the food's gonna come out of. I have my smaller circles where I'm gonna put my perches in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. So what you're gonna do is go through one side and then poke it out the other. And do the same on the other side. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's coming together. Okay. So remember how I said this craft paper might actually come in handy? I was thinking, oh, I need a funnel to pour my birdseed into my milk carton. And then I thought, what if I already had a, an oval shaped hole in the middle of my paper. What if I folded that over and made my own funnel just like that? Um, if you have any scrap paper sitting around, what you do is you just kind of fold it into itself you can see in this above camera, so that it has a little hole at the bottom, just like a regular funnel. Put it in the milk jug. Let's see if this works. It does. A few pieces might fall out of the um, your circles. Oh, I gotta shake it a little bit. That's okay, you wanna fill up. I'm gonna fill it up enough so that the birds can reach it while they're sitting on their perch. Almost. Let me keep going a little bit. Woo, birds, he's flying everywhere. All right. They're gonna be able to sit on that perch and reach right in on either side. I'm gonna save this bird so it doesn't go to waste. Okay, last step, go ahead and put the cap on. You can always take it on and off to put your bird seed in once it gets low. And what you can do is you can take a string, and I was just thinking, tying it to the handle, little knot at the top. You can ask an, a grown up to help you with this part. And there you have it. It'll hang right from a branch in your backyard. I can't wait to see the pictures of yours when you're finished. <laughs> okay, last bird feeder. I'm super excited about this one because it's gonna be a little bit messy and messy is fun. Make sure you have an area that's okay that it might get messy. Maybe you put some newspaper down or a piece of paper down. Okay, what you're gonna need is your bird seed and you're gonna wanna have it in a container that your toilet paper roll can fit in because you're gonna be dipping it in there, okay? So it's gotta be at least as big as this toilet paper roll. You need some peanut butter, or if you have a jar of honey, that'll work too. And then some string, and I have a knife just to spread my peanut butter on the toilet paper. Here we go. 
You're going to open up your jar of peanut butter. Take your knife. Just like you're making a PB and J, you're gonna get a little bit of peanut butter. Woo! And you're gonna spread it on your toilet paper roll. Okay. Doesn't have to be beautiful. The point is it works as an edible glue. So the birds not only can eat it and it's not harmful, um, they can also, or it is also used as the glue to hold the bird seed on. You're gonna wanna cover the entire outside. If you cannot use peanut butter, say you have an allergy, there's, like I said, honey or sun butter, um, all kinds of different alternatives to peanut butter. So don't worry about that as long as it's safe for the birds to eat. Whoop. All right, I'm almost to the other side. already on my fingers. It's messy, messy. I love it. Okay. There we go. I have covered <laughs> my entire toilet paper roll. Now, I have some bird seed that's, that's quite big. I see some sunflower seeds in there and some nuts in there. So we'll see how well it sticks. Um, if you have the um, bird seed that's much smaller seeds, it might stick a little bit better, but we'll find out. You're just going to press it down and spin it, press it down, spin it. You wanna cover each side. Oh, it's working just fine. I had my doubts, I shouldn't have. Spin it, ooh, it's sticky. Spin it. All right, you can also take some with your fingers, press it on. You wanna cover as much space as possible so it feeds them for a long time. Definitely, while you're doing this, be thinking about the places that you can per put your bird feeder so that you can actually see the birds come visit it. I was thinking about putting mine right outside my bedroom window. I have a lot of birds that come into the backyard, uh, specifically like doves, and I've seen a few robins. And I would love to see them come visit this bird feeder, so I'm gonna put it somewhere where I can admire them. All right. Once you have your roll covered, this is so easy. The last thing you're gonna do is take your string and run it through your toilet paper roll like this and tie it at the top. Just a good solid knot will do. All right, then you're gonna go take it and hang it from a branch somewhere outside. And the birds are gonna enjoy it. And when you notice that the bird seed is almost all the way gone, you could probably bring it back inside and reuse it. If not, just grab another toilet paper roll, and make a new one. Thank you so much for watching, friends. If you wanna see any other how-to craft videos, go visit my channel and subscribe and you can see some of the videos I've made in the past with other really cool crafts. I keep it really simple with things that you can find around the house. I'm going to go wash this peanut butter off my hands. Thanks for watching.